Chapter 4. The moment the grown-ups had left the room, Julius turned to Varjak. I know why the Contessa's not here, he said, digging a claw into the toy mouse. It's because she can't stand to look at Varjak's eyes. Jasmine, Jay, Jethro and Jerome all stood by Julius's side. No one stood by Varjak's side. He was alone and boxed in by the Contessa's empty armchair. Poor Varjak, said Cousin Jasmine, she, but she was smiling as if it was some kind of joke. Why do you always pick on him? I'm sure he'd rather have green eyes like everybody else. Because they're different, said Jay. The colour of danger, added Jethro. He's not one of us, concluded Jerome. Varjak ignored them. He didn't even look at them, staring instead into the fire. The Contessa's not here because she's probably dead. Didn't you hear the elder poor? That's enough, insect, snapped Julius. No one asked you, and how dare you speak in family council? You're a disgrace to the name of Jalal. Julius's tail thudded menacingly on the rug. Very slowly, Varjak looked up and met his big brother's eyes. His own tail started to thud. Is that supposed to scare me? sneered Julius. He towered over Varjak Paul. His claws came out, so did Varjak's. Fight, fight, fight! Jay, Jethro and Jerome crowded round the two of them. Jasmine watched, grooming her fine silver blue fur. Varjak shook inside, but he didn't show it. He didn't back off. He'd never had a real fight, and he knew he didn't stand a chance against Julius. But it was as if something inside him was rising up, something old and strong and buried deep. Who did Julius think he was? Julius, darling, he's only a little kitten, cooed Jasmine in her milk in the morning voice. He's not even a proper Mesopotamian blue, said Julius. He stared at Varjak with devastating green eyes. His pupils were thin slits of scorn, mocking, challenging, daring Varjak to move first. Varjak couldn't. He couldn't even hold the gaze. It was too strong, too sure of itself. Whatever it was that had risen up within him had gone. He turned away and backed down. It was over. Julius had beaten him with just one look as father had beaten the elder Paul. In the fireplace, the flames sputtered and died. You're the cause of all this trouble, said Julius. Apologise for what you've done. I'm sorry, croaked Varjak. The words were like hot coals in his mouth. And don't ever do it again or I'll break every bone in your body. Varjak sloped away from the front room, humiliation scorching his cheeks. Disgrace to the name of Jalal. That hurt the most. He didn't care what Julius thought. But Varjak had always felt close to his ancestor, always loved the tales. He couldn't bear the thought of being a disgrace to him. You wait, he said to an imaginary Julius in his head. You just wait. One day I'll show you. There was no one in the hall. It didn't matter if he got caught going out into the garden now. Things could hardly get any worse. Varjak went up to the back door, nudged the cat flap open and slid silently out. The garden was a dark, gloomy place full of gnarled old trees. They bent back on themselves, grown inwards and locked together, making a tangled net of knotted wood. It was hard to see the sky through them. Beyond the trees lay the stone wall that enclosed the Contessa's house and garden. It was so high that no one in the family could imagine climbing it. Even Varjak, who could sometimes make it halfway up a curtain before mother and father shouted him down. He drank in the cold night air, peered at the massive wall, the tangled branches and thought he could see a thin white whisker of moon up there, far, far above. Varjak! It was the elder Paul. He was on his own at the bottom of the garden, but the crumbling roots of a drying, dying tree. Varjak padded over to join him. I'm sorry, elder Paul, he said. It's all my fault, everything that happened, but it's true about the black cats. I swear on the name of Jalal, it's true. His grandfather smiled sadly. I know that, he replied, and it's not your fault. Not a bit of it. It's them. They don't even want to think anymore. They sat in silence together in the shadow of the wall. Are you still going to tell me the tale of Jalal's greatest battle? said Varjak after a while. Against Salia of the North? Not tonight said the elder Paul. I'm afraid there are more important things to tell you first. 
You're still young, but I don't think we have much time, and you're the only one who will understand. Vajat's skin tingled beneath his fur. Even after what had happened in the council, he was thrilled by his grandfather's words. I'm ready, Elder Paul, he said. Then listen carefully. Jalal only knows what this gentleman's up to, but with the Contessa gone, it's more than we can manage. We have to get help from the outside. Isn't the world outside full of monsters, said Vajak. A monster's exactly what we need. A monster called a dog. The tales say they're huge and strong enough to kill a man. Dogs fill the heart with fear with their foul breath and deafening sound. But the tales also say Jalal could talk to them. So there must be a way to get their help, to scare this man away. Mother and father say the tales aren't true. They say they're only stories. Only stories? The elder Paul looked at him. And you believe that? Vajak shook his head. No. Good, because I'm going to tell you a family secret now, an old one. It goes right back to the beginning. Vajak's mind raced. This was the first he'd heard of any secret. Is it about Jalal? He guessed. The elder Paul smiled in the dark. It is indeed. Everyone knows the tales of Jalal. But his way is a mystery known only to a few. The way of Jalal. This was something Julius and the others knew nothing about. And the elder Paul was telling him, him and no one else. The way, said the elder Paul, has been passed down through the ages from poor to poor. Much of it has been forgotten over the years, lost and corrupted through time. Now only fragments remain. Perhaps the way will help us talk to dogs, perhaps not. I do not know it all, and I fear I won't have long enough to teach you the parts I know, but it's all we have left. Varjak felt strangely disappointed. Now he knew there was a family secret. He wanted to know it all. What was the point of a secret which was lost? Still, something was better than nothing. Tell me more, Elder Paul. Come closer. Varjak bent towards him. Closer. He leaned right over so his ear was by the Elder Paul's mouth. There are seven skills in the way of Jalal, whispered the Elder Paul. His breath was warm in the cold night air. We know only three of them. Their names are these. Slow time, moving circles, shadow walking. He recited the skills slowly, in rhythm like poetry. Learn these words and pass them on in turn. Slow time, said Vajak. Moving circles, shadow walking. He rolled the words over his tongue like a new taste. Again. Slow time, moving circles, shadow walking. His fur prickled at the strange sounds. Never forget this. Keep the way alive, Vajak Paul. Vajak nodded. The words, Jalal's words, were safe in his head. He would always remember them. Click! The back door swung open. Vajak and the elder Paul looked round. The gentleman was standing there, and by his shiny black shoes there were two sleek black cats.